Hi everyone and welcome back from your summer holidays. Maybe, at least at Skahoi, we are now back at the office while every one of us has had a few weeks of um, vacation this summer. And um, we are super happy to now introduce uh, new products and device core implementations and so on to you guys. We're looking forward to see you in, in September for the webinar series for this fall. But in the meantime, we have a lot of YouTube content to share with you. And this is the Lumens A61P camera, a 4K camera from Lumens, which also has triple stream output, which I think sounds like a pretty exciting thing that you can actually have three different stream um, uh, formats coming out of the camera, something you set up in the web interface, obviously. At the same time, it has HDMI, SDI, but also Ethernet connectivity on the back, so you can wire it up in traditional ways. And the Ethernet has PoE. If you look at this one on the uh, table, we have a single cable for power and Ethernet, just like your Skahoi controller is preferably connected to your infrastructure single cable solution. We like that. So um, also, the camera has multiple user levels inside. So if you uh, want to make sure that people can access the web and Interface to just watch the stream, you can have that. Then you have a level for operation and then finally one for the administrator. I guess that would be setting IP addresses and so forth. And then finally, there is a dedicated software control software for this camera. But you are likely to want a hardware surface for your uh, control of PVC cameras, which is why Skyhawk has a very nice range of products for that. We have a PVC Pro today on uh, um, a configuration, pretty standard configuration with the Lumens camera. So I'm going to show you that. You should check out the PDC Fly, the PDC Extreme, which is like Extreme, the bigger brother of the PDC Pro, and the Fly is the, the little brother to the PDC Pro. Everything I show you today is available on those controllers as well. It's mainly a matter of how many buttons do you want to have direct access to features and how small a form factor do you want? And then, of course, there's the price tag and so forth. Because Skyhoi makes software that runs on all our controllers. So whatever features we can do with this PDC Pro is available on those other controllers as well. Now, let's get into it. I am assuming that you may be new to uh, how a Skyhoi PDC controller works. Uh, you can watch multiple other videos for other cameras. You'll see there is a pattern repeating itself. But I want to give you the full insight into how this controller works specifically with this Lumens camera. And when I say specifically, I mean we do integrations that has implemented features that only this camera has. And that's what you'll see in a moment. So the, the main way we use a um, a, a PDC Pro is that we have a camera selector on the lower row. That's how we usually configure it. So we have only one camera today. It's lighting up here because it's connected and we can select it. Had I had multiple cameras, then I would have seen uh, dimmed light in the other buttons. I could select, could select those, as you might imagine. So uh, we'll move over here. This pad of buttons select section is recalling presets. That's the main feature of PDC cameras. So you can see the camera is now pointed to an exhibition of great Skahoi controllers. And when I press button number two, we'll see we are recalling a preset to a close up on the section over here with, with a color fly and also a, an air fly. I press uh, preset number three, we go to this section and so forth. At the same time, we are also recalling uh, settings for exposure mode. And you see in the display, these settings are shown to you. We have two-way communication to cameras we control. It means we pull data out of the camera. So if you went to the web interface or used dedicated software, made changes, they would show up on the Skyhoi controller. So that's a very important and uh, feature for a quality broadcast controller. So of course we do that. So that is preset recall. If you want to store a preset, like um, move the camera with the joystick, as I'm doing right now, then you just press and hold. I'll do that on preset number 10. Press and hold, it turns green. When it turns green, um, it means it's stored. I can now recall preset number one. That was only slightly different. And then preset number 10. And there you go, uh, um, recalling that one. A uh, little tip here. If you want to make sure that your end users are not storing presets on some pre-recorded presets, of course you can do that in the controller. You know what? The action for setting presets has a function, which is, do you want to have a combined recall and set function on the button, like here, where you have a long press that will store the preset? Or do you just want your buttons to recall with no option of storing the preset as well? See, that's how flexible Skyhoi controllers are, that you can, you can do that to make sure that they fit exactly your use case. Now, 
um, the menu section is where you have all the good stuff hidden, where we really go into detail with this camera. And the exposure menu is the default. You see it right here. Exposure mode is manual. We can set the iris, shutter speed, and gain. Currently, it's a little bit, um, it little, little bit too dark for my taste, so I can increase the gain a little bit if I, if I want some more light here. Or I could decrease the shutter speed uh, by turning this knob, obviously, and I can turn down the gain again. So these uh, buttons is what is used to control the exposure of course. Let's say you purchase one of our RCPs. Those are the things that you would map to the iris joystick and to uh, the, the knobs that you wanted to control shutter speed and gain on the upper section of the RCP. So again, think software for this camera can be mapped onto any Skyhawk controller. But if you press additional times on the exposure uh, button function, you see that we get into um, additional layers in this menu, which is related to exposure. So uh, I need to change back to automatic mode here. And if I do so, you see we blank out these because it wouldn't make any difference to adjust the iris with that knob. But if I go here, you can see I have a gain limit for auto exposure. I can also, I, and of course I can operate that. So how, how far is the gain allowed to go? I can turn on and off backlight compensation here. That's found in a different menu as well. Um, exposure compensation, which I, f I find is a very useful uh, feature because it gives you a way to, to kind of bias your auto exposure to be either lighter or darker than um, the, the camera figures out itself. And then finally you go here where you have uh, limits, uh, limits for iris uh, minimum and maximum in the auto mode. That's all hidden by repeated presses on the exposure mode button right there. So you see, and, and some of these features, I can guarantee you, I don't see iris max and min in many PTC cameras. So that's one of the things that is specific in the Lumens camera here, uh, which I only see a very few times. But we support it. That's the main point. Now, um, just quickly, auto mode, manual mode, we have shutter speed and iris mode, of course, as well. All the modes that the camera support. White balance menu, same kind of thing. You see auto mode for white balance. These features are not available. If I go to indoor, we have, uh, you can see on the picture here, we have indoor um, pa painting of the camera, outdoor, white balance, one uh, push white balance. Let's see if it makes any difference. It did a little bit, yes and uh, auto tracking white balance, and then finally manual white balance. In manual mode, you have red and green, uh, sorry, red and blue gain. These would also be mapped to knobs on your RCP if you were shading this camera. Um, and of course, we can now paint the picture um, and we can also usually press and hold the button to reset the parameter to its um, middle level, which is uh, usually uh, 64. But let's see if I can manage to paint this a little bit. I am not a uh, professional into this kind of thing. But I think about here is where I would put it if I wanted something that looks like a fairly neutral uh, color reproduction from this camera. Uh, okay, let's just keep it here. That's nice. We go to the color menu. There you see hue, sharpness, gamma mode, and backlight. Uh, so backlight compensation was in the exposure mode as well. In other words, you can choose to put features in multiple places in the menu if you desire so. It may also be confusing depending on your context, but you can place multiple parameters where they belong in the context they belong. So um, gamma modes, we can choose up to uh, four different from zero up to three. Sharpness and hue, I'm not sure we'll be able to see a whole lot of difference uh, if I turn these, I can try. But at least these parameters are known from the camera's web interface as well. In the image section, you have noise reduction. Again, you can change it from the three, uh, four levels it has. Um, we have 3D noise reduction and the various uh, levels of that. We have backlight uh, compensation on and off uh, put in here again. And then picture effect. The most important thing in a PTC camera being able to negate the output. Um, why? <laughs> Black and white. Maybe, I don't know, um, but it's always there. So why not? Image flip, um, yes, of course, if you wanna, sorry, <coughs> change that. Uh, mute, um, so just blank out the image can be useful. Uh, power on off, I won't touch that right now. And the OSD, so if there would be any feature that you wanna access, which is only in the on-screen menu of the camera, you can enable the on-screen menu by using this button, and then you can navigate up and down using the joystick, and then you can go into further levels by again turning this knob, so you have like a, a vertical and a horizontal navigation, and you can use the joystick in combination with this one to navigate the on-screen menu. 
if we are going on here, you now have speed parameters. Now, um, that is if you want to control um, the, the speed of the joystick. If you have full swing of the joystick, is it supposed to just move like that and sweep across the stage? Or do you want to have finer control? You can adjust it right here. So we have uh, speed adjustments for pan tilt and zoom and also the focus. And speaking about focus, that's the next thing we have over here. So we see manual focus is the current mode we have selected. Let's just zoom in a little bit here. And it turns out that the image is truly not in focus. So I go to this point. I can now either choose to uh, turn this knob, which will trigger the um, automatic uh, one push fo focus, which we just uh, did. Or I can turn this knob, which is usually assigned to do a manual focus adjustment on this camera. And there it can be helpful to have the uh, speed set up correctly here. So I'm bringing the camera out of focus a little bit. Um, you see right there. Okay. So I want to bring it back and it is happening as I'm turning the knob here. Now, um, if I'm turning this one down, then the steps is going to get smaller. And that's, of course, how speed control works. Speed control for pencil zoom, same thing. It's currently 50%. Uh, Let's bring it down to, to uh, uh, 13. I move the joystick full swing. You see, this is the max it's going to give me. I put it up to 100. This is the max it's going to give me. So much quicker, of course. Actually, one thing I like about this camera is that it has some kind of ramping on the pan tilt and zoom, which uh, usually plays out uh, nice uh, because it gives you a smoother start on the pan and the tilts and so forth. And speaking about that, what about cruise control, which is a very nice feature that we put into the Skyhoy controller. That's not specific for lumens, but uh, let's say that we have this um, we have this shot of something on the stage and you want to have a, a slow creep zoom pulling back from the subject. So a cruise control is a way like in your car that you kind of you, you set a point of speed and then it's going by that speed, but only until a timer has um, um, has stopped. So we had we have set it up to seven seconds. You use the shift key here, then you access the cruise control menu and you have seven banks of cruise control for this camera. So what we can do and just notice what happens. Now I'm gonna make a, a pulling back with the zoom a little bit here. Okay, I'll just go in a little bit further so we can see this really work. Okay, I'll also turn down the speed a little bit. And then I'm now pulling back, pressing this button. See, hands free. It's still zooming, okay? And you can see it's counting down two seconds, one second, and boom, it's stopping right here. Thank you. So that's cruise control, a way for you to do that. And why would you want to do it? Because in a live production situation, uh, one of the things you experience about PC cameras is that you are occupied with a single camera at a time. So with cruise control, you have a way to, to make that um, pulling back of that pan with the camera on the joystick, you press cruise control. And the moment you do that, you can change to a different camera. You can recall a preset on it and set it up ready to cut to that camera. So essentially cruise control and another feature we call PDC trace is uh, designed to help a single operator to have a workflow with more dynamic content because you can essentially control two cameras at a time using these features to, to keep the cameras moving while he's doing something else. So, friends, this is the introduction of the Lumens A61P camera, 4K from Lumens, wonderful camera, a lot of nice features and full Skyhoy control.